This video is sponsored by Mammoth Interactive. Take your skills to the next level at mammothinteractive.com. Check the links down below for some amazing deals. Hey everybody, welcome to the tutorial. This tutorial I'm going to show you how to make emissive materials as well as making um, post-processing volumes to make the emissive materials look a bit better. Now, if you've ever done an emissive material tutorial, like even the ones that I've shown you, you'll realize that it's good and gets the job done, but you can actually do quite a bit better here. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in a sphere here and with this, I'm basically going to add in a sphere so we can maybe have a sphere and why not? Let's add in a cube here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add two emissive materials here. So what we're going to do is first of all, create these uh, emissive materials. So I'm going to right click, add in a material here. We'll call this uh, emissive red. And you, you're going to see that this does exactly what we're supposed to do here. So what we're going to do is create a constant three vector, double click on that put it up to somewhere in the red area. And that's all we need to do here. And then within the emissive color, we're going to actually, we could probably just get away with just doing this here. So let's just go ahead and let's do that here. And what that's going to do is that that's going to make uh, it a red color, but we do actually need something a little bit more here. Um, we do need, um, before we do that, um, we do need a multiply. Okay. And uh, all we're going to do is add in a constant and then this constant here is going to be something big like 500. All right. And, and what that should do is that should allow us to make, well, something that looks quite a bit red and glowing. All right. Let's go ahead and let's save that. And it might take a couple seconds to save just because that's the way this stuff works. And um, we're just going to go in here and we're going to type in emissive. And look at that, emissive red. And so you can see, well, yeah, it's pretty big just because 500 is a big number, but we can actually make this look a little bit better here. In fact, one of the whole reasons I wanted to do this here uh, was to show you how to make kind of rods and whatnot. Uh, but what we can do is we can actually scale this up to like 100 or something like that. Well, maybe not uh, that much uh, here. Um, so let's undo that here. Let's scale that back down to one. Uh, but what I do want to do here is unlock this and then maybe make this 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And there we go. Um, and then this one here, I want to make um, something like, um, I don't know, let's make it 20 for now. Okay, well, let's make it a bit too much, 10. All right, so we got these these rods here. Um, and so I, I can show you how, actually how to, how to do that um, in a second here. But let's go ahead. Let's use a couple more things here. Uh, emissive red. Now, 500 is quite a lot, um, but I'm going to duplicate this. And uh, we're going to call this, guess what? Emissive blue, right? And you're going to double click on this here and make this a nice blue color. Fancy that right? Go ahead and push save. We don't need for it to load here. Um, just because um, uh, we'll just go ahead and let's put a save there. Not too difficult. A couple seconds. And then this guy here, we're going to go type in emissive blue. And there we go. We got this nice blue color. And then why don't we do that one more time? And then let's duplicate that here. And we're going to call this emissive purple. Okay. Now purples are always kind of difficult to do with lighting. Uh, you know, they end up being like more of a pinkish color. So let's, let's see if we can kind of get that to work. Yeah. So again, purples are a little bit more tricky, but we're going to go ahead and save that anyway. And um, it always takes a couple seconds. And remember, whenever I record something, uh, it does end up being, um, uh, it does end up being a little bit uh, more laggy. All right, so we got all these items here, and I'm going to show you actually how to do this here. Okay, so you can see here that this looks pretty good, but what I wanted to show you was the post-processing volume. Post-processing volume, okay? So we're going to drag that out here, and we're going to type in infinite. So what this will do is extend everything uh, to the infinite. Then um, I want you to take and um, do the intensity of the bloom, and you can see that this can get really intense really fast, okay? So you can see here that this is looking pretty good. Um, and I'm just going to go to the skylight here. And um, we do need, we can take the intensity down. We can take the light source, the intensity basically down to zero, uh, which looks pretty cool. But 
if we hop back in to this um, here, and we can see that you can make this this bloom, you know, pretty intense. So this is something that um, I a lot of people have had problems with, uh, especially if you're making kind of like a cyberpunk uh, type game with lots of neon lights or whatever. Uh, the bloom this here will make the intensity quite a bit here. Now, for example, you don't always have to, uh, like if I just hop into these and I make this here something like 100 instead of 500, and then let's just make these all 100 here. You can kind of see, you know, how this will play out a little bit differently um, here, right? Um, and I'm just push save, and then this might take a bit of time. So I'm just gonna do this off camera. So there we go. I've uh, basically changed this to 100 here. But if we go back into this post processing volume and this intensity of the bloom, you can see, you know, goes from practically nothing to quite intense. So it's up to you whether you want to do that or not. And so, um, you know, this is like kind of maximum intensity here, but it does look pretty cool. Uh, when you add in that bloom, it makes it look a little bit less standard. If you're making kind of like a um, uh, if you're basically making a, uh, a a game that deals with any kind of um, uh, like neon lights or lights in a cave or something, uh, this basically works for you. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. If you really like this video, you can buy our content down below. It really does help us out when you buy our content down below because this channel doesn't do a Patreon. Instead, we sell our digital products down below. If you really like this channel, you can subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. We release 20 to 60 hours of fresh new content per month every single month. We release everything from Adobe tutorials to 3D modeling tutorials to game development tutorials to machine learning tutorials to web development tutorials and more. We're constantly pushing the bounds in e-learning and if we can get to 10,000 paid subscribers per month, we can become the best e-learning company on the planet. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.